Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and it looks like we got a bit of a slowdown week with breakthroughs for Lil Baby and Jack Harlow. And this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So alright, full disclosure going forward, given some problems with copyright disputes that I'm encountering and the fact that YouTube's escrow program has been on the fritz and I haven't seen proper revenue for the past six months worth of videos, and even despite working with YouTube on these technical issues, the tickets are still not being resolved, I'm unfortunately going to have to limit some of the copyrighted video and audio I usually play for those segments until the bug's fixed. I agree, not ideal. I would prefer that I was able to showcase a little bit more, but hell, most of y'all are here for my commentary anyway, or at least the sure as hell hope you are, and hopefully this will just be short term. At the very least, the editing might be a little bit easier too, but hey, on an episode where I was expecting two smaller album bombs and neither of them happened, I guess I'll take what I can get. But before we get to all that, the big news actually comes in our top 10, where for a second week in a row, we got a new number one, First Class by Jack Harlow. And this is one of those cases where you kind of win on the margins, because Jack Harlow swept through with tremendous streaming and sales, but with the radio lagging very far behind. My general rule of thumb is that this is probably going to collapse after this week, especially if airplay does not catch up but the streaming margin will be a tough one to beat. That said, As It Was by Harry Styles is set up to do so at number two. It's right behind in streaming and the radio has gained a ton of steam very quickly. And that means that Heat Waves by Glass Animals is not likely to catch up with much of anything at number three. It spent the week wavering on the top of the radio and it's slipping in all other categories. Hell, it could be vulnerable to Big Energy by Lotto featuring Mariah Carey and DJ Khaled at number four. But I'm not really sure about this one, because even as its radio has traction, the streaming took a notable dip. Not really a good sign if it's trying to make that push. Now it did hold up over Enemy by Imagine Dragons and J.I.D. at number 5, which continued to pick up a radio surge even as its streaming started slipping, mostly losing on the sales margin. But even still, it held up over Stay by The Kid Leroy and Justin Bieber at number 6, which is in free fall across the board. It'll probably be passed by Super Gremlin by Kodak Black Black at number 7, which is still mostly holding its streaming in place if nothing else. But then there's Woman by Doja Cat holding at number 8, which I'd say could make a run if its radio wasn't starting to implode, which is the exact same case for Ghost by Justin Bieber at number 9, if not more so. Finally we got That's What I Want by Lil Nas X at number 10, which actually seemed to stabilize on the radio, but given that's all it really has, we're not going to see much of a late period run, only if everything above it falls apart. And on that note, our losers and dropouts. A couple notable ones in the latter category, outside of Love Nuantiti Ah 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 by CK comfortably getting its year-end list spot, specifically both By Your Side by Rod Wave and What Else Can I Do by Diane Guerrero and Stephanie Beatriz, and continue with Encanto finally going away, Dos Arreguitas by Sebastian Yatras at 93, and Family Magical hits 78. The former, a continued loser along with Soy El Unico by Yantri Lisa, Sue, and Sensia at 69, Nobody Like You by Four Town at 72, and Thinking With My Dick by Kevin Gates and Juicy J at 88. Then we have the debuts that have no traction, When You're Gone by Shawn Mendes at 52, and In My Head by Lil TJ at 64, followed by the songs that are making a more comfortable exit, with Pushin' P by Gunna Future and Young Thug locking up its year and list spot at 35, and Light Switch by Charlie Puth at 43, likely needing and probably getting a couple more weeks to get in. Finally, we got P Power by Gunna and Drake stalling out at 93, and Over by Lucky Day at 96. I did think radio would have to get further on board for this to actually go up, and turns out I was unfortunately right about that one. But now on to our returns and gains, and outside of Blick Blick by Coil Array and Nicki Minaj at 95, getting the smallest of album boost, alongside XLT Mavez by Daddy Yankee and Bad Bunny slipping back at 99, there's just not really much here. For 5 e Foreign's little album boost, he took City of Gods with Kanye West and Alicia Keys to 71, and unfortunately, Hans 
Midsummer by Russ and Caitlin rebounded to 54, but the other two gains I mostly like, with Get Into It Ya yeah! by Doja Cat back at 82, and Nail Tech by Jack Harlow continuing up to 40. I'm not expecting the latter to do all that much, given that the radio has been kind of reticent, but if streaming holds, maybe it'll work beyond just residual connection to first class? Maybe? Anyway, now onto a slightly shorter list of our new arrivals. Unfortunately, starting with number 100, Praise the Lord by Brayland and Thomas Rhett. Not gonna lie, it was hard to avoid a wince when I saw a song with this title from these two, especially as I think I've yet to find a single Braylon song I'd even call decent. And yeah, this is not changing things. Why does the hand clap sound both fake and weirdly wet and spongy off that vaguely faded lead guitar rollick? And that's before what might pass for a gospel progression breaks into a trap breakdown on the second hook with gutless drum machines, alongside some of the most obviously compressed vocals I've heard in some time? Isn't gospel supposed to sound organic, build real presence, not end so abruptly without anything close to a proper bridge or transition? But the truth is, this is not gospel. It's list-driven Nashville country with nothing in the way of soul or personality that can barely disguise how cheap it all sounds. In other words, wow, this is awful. Next. Number 97, Neck and Wrist by Pusha T featuring Jay-Z and Pharrell. I was genuinely surprised to see this here. Not that it's not deserving, but because Pusha T has normally needed a little bit more of a push to land his singles on the Hot 100. See the glaring lack of Diet Coke here in an example from this album cycle. But hey, Jay-Z's name is a good way to get this on the charts. And wow, I really wish Diet Coke had charted over this, because I really don't care for the song. Let's start off with the production, where Pharrell has provided this oily synth roiling across the bass, and it never stops being annoying or building to more off that quieter twinkle and fragmented ad-libs. And you know what, fine, it's not like Pusha T needs much to work with off the sample, and to be fair, he's got a solid flexing verse that doesn't skip on the menace. I've always liked how Pusha T emphasizes having better taste and class than a lot of the standard rapper brands, and he's so consistently clever, even if so much of it ultimately circles around the coke trade. The problem is that neither Jay-Z nor Pharrell showed up effectively. Jay-Z approaches this same brand of bragging, but doesn't seem nearly as clever with the flex, mostly because he ends his verse high highlighting how he'd still be as big if Biggie had survived and they had formed the commission, which I'm not sure is ground that I would want to revisit 20 plus years later, even if it seems like he's tying up loose ends. And Pharrell, I mean, you had a pretty decent ominous post-chorus. Why go full future on King's Dead and leak into a bad falsetto that just kills the vibe? Even for the meme, I thought that was a misstep four years ago. I can argue future hasn't been good since, and it's just as much of one here. Shame the rest of the song is not that good because, damn, I really wanted to like this. Number 81, Treat Me by Chloe. You know, I'm still not sure how I feel about all Chloe's solo endeavors, but she was the best part of that 5 year foreign album. I mostly liked her last charting single, so this... Why do I get the problem that she's running to the exact same problem she had with Have Mercy, if not more so? Once again, we got another ass-focused R&B jam, most notably for the very prominent sample of Miss New Booty from Bubba Sparks, and there's that 2000s R&B feel by way of a very skeletal bassy knock before it breaks into a scratch-heavy trap breakdown, and fine, while that can work as a dance jam, that's not really how Chloe's playing it. Instead, she's going for either imperious, treat me like I'm royalty, Beyonce territory, or piling in her higher register or in her falsetto vocals to try and make it sound more sensual, and it leaves the entire thing feeling very clunky and crowded more than it should be, especially on that hook. I don't know, I'm not sure why Chloe thinks throwing back to the stripe of R&B party jams is the right fit for her style beyond that nostalgia brand coming back, but even if I may have come around on Have Mercy, this isn't quite working. Feels like a misstep. Number 79, Thump Shit by 42 Doug and ESTG.
Gotta be honest, I'm surprised that either of these two are still able to chart these days. Mostly because as MCs, they can be pretty rough around the edges, unless they lock into a grittier flow or vibe. So when a decent amount of the song is talking about the women they're trying to nail, you're not exactly in for a good time. Especially off of that weedy synth melody and hints of strings behind this stuttering trap bass. But again, you're talking about 42 Doug, who is doing his more nasal Kodak black wannabe flow, with even clunkier rhymes and a lot of gangland flexing. And then ESTG shows up for more of the same. That's just as clunky even before we get to the premature ejaculation lines that end his verse. Classy. Look, apparently this is a song from a collab album that the two of them are putting together. And if this is a showcase of the quality from that, uh, yeah. Not interested. Number 75, Psycho Freak by Camila Cabello featuring Willow. Bye. Tell me that you love me, are you mine? Give me lemonade, I give you limes. Anyone else think that the last Camila Cabello album just kind of came and went? Seriously, even if she's not an album bomb artist, I was expecting more attention, and yet, outside of very few requests and the fact the album still wound up on my schedule, I've heard very little about this. Kind of odd, you'd think she'd have more momentum and popularity at this point, but hey, this is a song that she did with Willow, and it's a bit of a weird one, not gonna lie. First you get that gauzy minor key organ splashing behind the clicking patter of the percussion, that eventually picks up some real sandy layers and warping synth bass. Willow delivering a vocal pattern that almost kind of reminds me of Tom's Diner. And then Camilo Cabello delivering a surprisingly restrained vocal performance as she goes through a sing-song melody about how fame generally sucks. But the interesting thing is that her complaints feel a little bit more focused and self-aware. She's naturally a little bit more paranoid and pessimistic, especially performing that she's healed herself on Instagram, or wondering if she's still giving off enough sex appeal. More interestingly is the references to her split from Fifth Harmony. Nothing that sparks a lot of drama, mostly because she doesn't blame the rest of the band for how it all ended, and that she was probably the one who grew the most distant. And that kind of does back up a lot of what was said around the time. Even if she caught the lion's share of the blame and the drama. Which, in retrospect, out of the nightmare of being signed to Psycho, I really can't blame her for all that much. There's still some stuff I know that I will blame her for, but different conversation. Overall... I think I appreciate this song more than I like it, even if it is maddeningly catchy. But if there was something that got me intrigued enough to check out Familia, it might have been this. Points for that. Next up, number 62, London by Bia featuring J. Cole. Why are people still trying to make Bia a thing? At this point, I haven't been remotely impressed with any of her collabs, and now netting one of the biggest names yet with J. Cole. Well, at least he might do well. That's saying something? I mean, it's not like Bia's doing much to endear herself. We're off the dreary melody and the rumbling UK trap vibe, where she sounds like she's disinterested in everything as she rattles through the brand names and some of the least convincing flexing with guns I've seen in a while. Little rich to imply folks are ripping you off when I can name half a dozen UK trap acts of which you've borrowed your entire flow and delivery, eh? But speaking of borrowing, uh, Cole, what are you doing with this phony English accent? I ripped into Drake five years ago when he tried doing this shit, and you're not exempt from it either. Not only do you sound painfully corny and weirdly off rhythm, you make your bad English references come across like the most exasperating sort of cultural tourism with every single bad ad lib. But that's not to get around certain bars that deserve some critique. Drum on the gun like Ringo. She go both ways, so I'm tasting the rainbow. Yummy, they got no bread, they're crummy, implying even Queen Elizabeth said that you're king. She doesn't know or care who you are, J. Cole. And then saying that he's proper capitalistic. Glad you confirmed everything No Name said about you two years ago. In the meantime, I hope a whole swath of UK rappers roll through and take out this trash. Number 14, In A Minute by Lil Baby. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Lil Baby is dropping a new album, and that he's dropping two singles right out of the gate to capitalize on it. Even if the buzz seemed kind of oddly muted, though that might be a factor of me just not noticing enough of it. But here we go. 
And I'll admit, I was a little bit thrown to hear such a very obvious sample, the melody behind Drake's Pound Cake, backing up the more aggressive trap groove. It's certainly distinctive, but okay, what's the little baby saying over it? And you know, it's not a good sign that the line that stands out the most amidst all the aspirational flexing and general paranoia is full court press, foot on they neck, and I can't let them breathe. I mean, it's not even that it's in rough in context and the fact that he made the bigger picture, and that still is probably remaining his most memorable song in terms of bars, but a little baby had more lines that actually popped off in all the rest of his music. I probably wouldn't take notice of the one that seems to trivialize in favor of stunting. So no, it doesn't do it for me. Let's move on to number 13, Right On by Lil Baby. You know, I was trying to get pulled in for this one. The snares clattered a little bit harder off the operatic mix, seemed to be building some credible bombast, and then Lil Baby comes in increasingly offbeat and just launches into his usual aspirational flexing and stacking money and buying his girl lots of stuff alongside sex and threesomes so that the only problem he seems to have is what watch to wear on any given day. I mean, I'll just tune out. If you're going to have that production that builds so much potency, showcases a darker veneer, that would amp up the drama or melodrama and you just spend it on stock flexing? That's a misstep, a major one. I mean, I get why the fans might like this off the production alone, but I'm not really enthused. I just wish it was memorable. And finally, number one, First Class by Jack Harlow. Uh Gotta be honest, when I heard that Jack Harlow was projected to go to number one, even against some weaker competition, I was genuinely curious what had captivated so many folks, especially as nail tech has underperformed for all intents and purposes. But with this, I mean, I get why folks are going to it, given the 2000s nostalgia that's setting in, and then there's that very obvious Fergie sample for Glamorous, which is actually one of the few Fergie samples I actually quite like for a solid bit, especially when Ludacris drops into his verse. And yeah, you know what? Kinda clever how Jack Harlow will chop the hook while keeping the tempo mostly stable with the faster knock and the more relaxed vibe off the pianos and the slight tinges of horns. But there's a bunch of lines that Jack Harlow just cannot get off. Pineapple juice, I give her sweet, sweet semen. The double entendre about releasing an album the same time as him. The shout out to UPS for delivering his plaques. How he basically spends most of his second verse off beats, even if the Euphoria reference was kind of decent. And Jack Harlow's punchlines are mostly memorable. I mean, it's frustrating with Jack Harlow because the relaxed vibe, the other half of the punchlines, they're actually pretty good. I like the dissing of frat boys. Now he said they don't need Gavinci, they need Jesus. The outright admission that more money doesn't often lead to more problems and he knows what he can give back to his family, which is his main focus. And now he finally got some folks on the bandwagon. It's those small little disses, they work. I mean, it's just kind of exasperating because Jack Harlow is on the cusp of being kind of overexposed, or at the very least hitting the very narrow line where he stops being able to pull off being as cool as he thinks he is. And this song is right on that edge, but I also got to admit it's probably the one I enjoyed nearly the most this week, netting the honorable mention behind Psycho Freak by Camila Cabello and Willow for the best. Trust me when I say that I'm as surprised as anybody that Pusha T did not get it this week, but I'm sorry, annoying production and bad guest appearances really held it back. Whereas the worst this week, it was easy. Praise the Lord by Braylon and Thomas Rett, with dishonorable mention going to London by Bia and J. Cole. Next week... Honestly, don't expect that much. Maybe that Lizzo song will do something and miss all the fallout. We'll have to see. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.